Yeah, I think I've been asked to do this presentation for two reasons. One is that I wrote a paper with Harold Del Monte uh, a few years ago on lesbian gay parents. And we called it Babes in Arms or Babes in the Woods. And that was playing with the idea of whether we could see gay parenthood as a positive or whether it was seen only as a negative. So it was begging the question, really. And I also do some work with same-sex parents in my, in my clinical work. But I'm going to race through this because I think I'm more interested in the, the, the discussion that, that will follow. But I wanted to just sort of highlight some of the points about motivation to parenthood. And that you'll see um, there are many gay men who do want to rear a child. And Bryant and Damien, and although it's quite old research, find that a third of their respondents under the age of 35 were either planning or considering having a child. And Hargard and, and Llewellyn suggest that parenting is a, a core human issue. So if you look at the reasons why gay men would want to have children, a desire to nurture children through active parenting, a wish to have children because like heterosexuals, lesbians and gay men actually enjoy having children around them and want to have a valued place in their lives. And what it also raises for us now, of course, is the decision not to have children and, what, and how, we th how we experience that, how we think about that. Because, of course, when I was growing up, it was a sort of impossibility unless I got married. But I also, so these are the sort of conscious reasons. And as a couple of psychoanalytic psychotherapists, I suppose I'm also interested in unconscious reasons. So we talk about the unconscious couple fit which are the reasons beyond the conscious, beyond the physical getting together, what might be lying under the surface. And so I'm going to show you this um, short video because I'm going to have to do it quite quickly in two parts. And this is Chris's story. Chris is someone who isn't prepared just to give away his sperm. He's a gay man who doesn't have a partner and he's desperate to be a dad. It's that old 30s thing, I suppose. Got to sort of 32, 33, and I'm like, mm, what am I doing with my life? What do I want from my life? <laughs> you know what I mean? And a baby's certainly one of them. Or a child is certainly one of them. So the assumption is that gay men don't want children, of course. Gay men can't have them as well, <laughs> which I believed for years. People used to say, I think we've talked about this, but people used to say, um, it's a shame you can't have kids, Chris. You'd make a lovely father. I used to say, yeah, it's terrible. And I believed it for years that I couldn't. Um, and I suppose, gradually, I realised that it was possible biologically, with a certain amount of uh, guesswork and... Uh, enterprise, it is possible to get a child, but it's a little bit more complicated. So Chris's um, story is that he wants to be a donor father. He's found two lesbians who are in a stable relationship and imagines having weekly contact that, but, will, but says he'll see what happens when the child is born. They have no legal contract and he wants a boy. And he says, I imagine that that might seem strange given the views that some people have about gay men. And of course, what he's hinting at there is the sort of confusion between um, pedophilia and, and um, gay sex. So of course, in, he's suggesting in people's minds that they will be thinking that, that he wants to have sex with his son, which you know is a pretty abhorrent idea. So I'm just gonna slip forward. People may have the wrong idea about gay men and children, but just why did Chris want a family? I asked him about his own upbringing. I grew up in care in Bristol. It was as happy as it can be when you're not with your family. And in some ways, I think, for me, it was happier. How did you come to be in the home? My mother um, had problems in basically raising me. She had mental health problems. Um, but I just sort of had memories of uh, 
being fostered at an early age. My mum would sort of disappear for months and then suddenly turn up again and take us from the foster home and take us back to her house. So it was quite a, it was quite a turbulent time, really, and very confusing time, I remember. And then um, one day she just stopped coming to see me. And uh, I was six. And what about your father? I don't know my father. Um, that still bugs. I've come to terms with a lot of the stuff around being in care and not having my mother around and stuff like that. But my father, she won't tell me who he is. And I find that really difficult. And that's partly my stuff around, I guess, around wanting to be a father myself. It's like, there's no way I'm not going to... My child's not going to know me. So what I'm sort of getting at here is that, um, of course, he's saying, we'll see what happens when the child is born. And I suspect, and a lot of the work that I do in this area is with some of these unconscious, unspoken expectations suddenly come alive when the child is born and the arrangements break down or there's disappointment or there's anger in terms of what the agreement actually is or can be or should be. And so one couple, you know, I've, I, I've worked with where the father was believed to be going to be an active father and then disappeared off the scene. And of course, what wasn't available to the, the mothers was the fact that he had been abused by his own father. And this suddenly came alive after the child was born. And so, you know, some of the ideas about how this would um, play out can't always be known. But let's, um, let's look at the roots to parenthood then. So, from a heterosexual marriage or relationship, fostering and adoption, donor insemination, and surrogacy. And I'm seeing quite a lot of gay fathers through the surrogacy route, which is, is interesting. Yeah, what do we think some of the myths are about um, gay fathers? Just throw me some, some what, do, what do we think um, people get concerned about in terms of gay fathers? You've mentioned pedophilia. Pedophilia, yeah. Any others? Yeah, children need a mother, yeah. Any others you can think of? Yeah, so and I believe that gay relationships are not um, secure and strong and that the child will be exposed to insecure attachments. These are, these, yeah, thank you. Okay, the other ones are babies are a fashion item. They're not really invested in them. You know, they're just an extension of a handbag or something. Men are promiscuous. Um, sexually transmitted diseases, HIV, Hep C. These really concern um, social care agencies in the context of children being fostered or adopted. So that if the agency gets to know that, that the fathers are in an open relationship, for example, that raises concerns. And, and of course, this thing that, that Tim was talking about today, that, that, that men are not able to be intimate. And that's getting at the couple relationship, because of course, if there are two parents bringing the child up. I think the other one is that um, they're not really going to work well with the lesbian mothers, if that's the, if that's the arrangement. So what the studies show is that, that gay fathers, as parents, have indeed a deep commitment to fathering and parenthood despite the challenges and the frustrations. And yet the transition to parenthood doesn't always run smoothly. And I'll talk about that. And it doesn't run smoothly for heterosexual couples either. So, you know, let's get real here. It's not specific to, 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 to gay fathers. And it has been suggested that the, f the further away the lesbian and gay, bisexual or trans parent family appears to be from the heterosexual two-parent nuclear family, the more likely people are to experience the prejudice or feel the need to be cautious and under pressure to justify the families. So there's, an, there's a sense in which these families are under scrutiny and therefore they have to perform that bit 
better than, than their heterosexual counterparts. And the gay father is interviewed by Schwarzer, I can't even pronounce that word, Schwarzer <laughs> felt that they experienced a double prejudice from mainstream society, oppression to non-heterosexual parenting, and suspicion of men who become primary caregivers. And if you look at the literature concerning married gay fathers who come out, um, these have the, the, this coming out in marriage has the potential to seriously disrupt family and parental bonds. But the majority of young people recruited for a study in 2009 had come to accept their father's new identity. It seems that the awareness of the gay father's gay identity developed gradually over time, suggesting that for families in difficulty following disclosure, that it may be helpful to understand the nature of the disclosure since the crisis may be provoked by the timing or the manner in which the disclosure was made rather than the father's sexual identity per se. And then other research shows for some gay fathers balancing parental responsibility with the need to explore their gay identity has the potential to create conflict, especially if mothers respond by attempting to influence the child's contact with the father. And just quickly on the research side, because most of the research has been on lesbian mothers rather than gay fathers, there's more research becoming available, mainly in relation to uh, um, gay fathers adopting children. But the research began in the 70s because lesbian mothers who did come out in marriage wanted to hold on to their children, and the courts were unable to look at, draw on any research to help them make decisions. And so they were relying on heterosexist, rather prejudiced sort of views. But the findings from all the studies consistently show that children in lesbian mother household showed no difference in terms of psychological adjustment or gender identity from children growing up in heterosexual family households. Less research on gay fathers, and I think that's because the children tend not to live with them full time. But in 2010, FAR conducted a comparative study of preschool children in adoptive gay father families and compared them with lesbian mother and heterosexual mother families. And again, no differences were found in terms of parental stress, discipline, or relationship satisfaction between the parents and the children's adjustment. And a UK study conducted in 2014, also on adopted children, again show no, that gay fathers are, were less depressed than either lesbian or heterosexual adoptive mothers and also that they showed more positive parent-child relationships. So the conclusions of the research show that children growing up in lesbian and gay parents or with lesbian and gay parents are no different in terms of psychological adjustment or gender development. Therefore the gender of the parent and the sexual orientation of the parent is much less important for children's psychological well-being than is the quality of the family relationships, and that shouldn't be a surprise to us. Gollenbox suggests that neither parent's sexual orientation nor their gender make a difference to the child's own gender identity, gender role behaviour, or sexual orientation. So what do we think are some of the challenges that confront gay fathers? as parents, and how might these differ from heterosexual? So I'm probably going to come out, if you just bear with me a second, I'll just come out of this part and I'll come back to the, to the um, because I've got some, some my, my, of my own that I'll show you and then we'll look at the clinical implications. But what do you think are some of the challenges that, that gay fathers or the children in, of gay fathers might, might experience? So stigma, yeah, yeah, stigma in school, yeah. Do you want to say a little bit more? So there's a lot of bullying and harassing of children when the other children are very cool yeah. and they're the, there's no mother, then yeah. it's, there's a kind of a combined mm -hmm. prejudice and stigma against yeah. the child. Yeah, thank you. Anything else? Other, other parents' views, yeah, towards... Yeah. 
I mean, we shouldn't underestimate the sort of feelings that there are. It's changing towards fathers generally, but I think historically there's been this sort of obsession with children needing a mother. And so the absence of this confronts everybody with a real challenge about children and fathers, children and men, both gendered children and, and men, and what are they up to? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll read you a short story of um, which Dominic thankfully sent me, but I think it does sort of that's the face of the father. I don't know if you can see him. He looks rather rather wonderful. Um, so I was an I was at an adoption event recently. He says talking to a young man who wanted to be a father but also wanted to carry on going out to clubs, having lovely foreign holidays, and eating at posh restaurants, because he said that was the gay lifestyle. I looked down at my yogurt-stained jeans, scratched my unkempt graying hair, what's left of it, and suggested that perhaps he was in for a bit of a culture shock. A lot of gay people, myself included, grew up thinking the parenthood was never an option. We may have wanted kids, but it was unlikely that we would be able to form families. Our expectations were different. We faced legal and social inequality, but at least we could embrace hedonism as a kind of compensation. Then in 2005, everything changed. The Adoption and Children Act came into effect, allowing unmarried couples, including same-sex couples, to adopt. Suddenly, we were faced with the very real option of becoming parents and of forming families people started to do it. Gay parents, once a rarity, became almost commonplace. A whole new way of being gay was opening up to us, one that didn't involve staying out till four in the morning and swanning off to sitches at the drop of a hat. It's taken a bit of getting used to, but in the last 12 years, same-sex parents have proved that they can do just as good a job as their straight counterparts. Numbers are increasing, adoption agencies see us as a valuable resource. Much to my amazement, I still hear the old complaint that gay people who marry and have children are aping heterosexual structures, that we're being assimilated by straight society, and that we're being assimilated by straight society. Well, let me tell you, being a gay parent means that you're confronting prejudice and ignorance every second of every day. You're coming out over and over again at the school gates, at the park, in the restaurants, wherever you go. You're standing up and showing people that we are strong, responsible members of society who can look after children just as well as they can. It's harder than staying in a hedonistic bubble. Gay parenting is more politically and socially challenging than living a separate lifestyle. If we show that we can raise children, we're basically dynamiting all the foundations of homophobia. We're responsible, we're in permanent relationships, and we're not a danger to kids. I think the Adoption and Children Act was a far more radical piece of legislation than civil partnership and marriage equality. Being a parent is incredibly rewarding. It's fun, it's exhausting, it makes you reevaluate your own childhood and upbringing, and it changes your relationship with society in a fundamental way. And I think, I think that really sort of sums up some of the, the joys of it. But the, as you've said, the lack of the negative outside world, the lack of positive mirroring, the extensive scrutiny, the place of the non-biological parent and the question of who the couple are. Because if you think about the gay father and the lesbian mother in the donor insemination situation, they would be the biological couple, and the lesbian mother's partner and the gay father's partner would be the non-biological. So they could be a couple. The, gay biolo the biological gay parents could be a couple. And so there are issues about language again. You know, what do we call the non-biological, what do children refer to the non-biological parent as being? There's the children's own reactions to it as well. And there's the question of family support and community support. And then there's the impact of the parents coming out. But I did want to just add some other things into it. Um, 
does the state of the couple relationship itself. And so a lot of the work I'm doing is trying to help, as we were talking about today, sometimes shoring up the, the gay partnership. That's the foundation for the children. And a lot of gay, a lot of gay and straight couples stay in the domain of parenting and the couple relationship then gets neglected. Or they privilege the couple relationship and then the child gets neglected, which is another sort of variation. And of course I've mentioned the thing about the concern about open relationships and polyamory which is another big concern. And so has that got to be hidden and kept secret because if the agencies get wind of it, you know, they get very, very exercised by it. So, are we, and also whether we're talking about a developmental relationship or a defensive relationship. And so much of the research has been organized around proving the point because of course we were starting from a, a zero, zero level of tolerance. Just finally, um, pointers for practice. Practitioners needing to create a safe space for same-sex parents and their children to talk about their experiences. Avoid using inappropriate models of practice based on heterosexual relationships. A deeper, deeper level of inquiry when taking, for example, a family history. So the route to parenthood might be important. The decision-making process. What information has been shared with the child and the assessment of support. It doesn't have to be family. It could be families of choice. It could be the community as a whole. Okay. Thank you.